Kashi showed up already, not? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay, then. So just one, one sentence or two. So welcome everybody. And uh, this is somehow an official, official announcement of the new edition of this seminar because we extended or augmented the original seminar by a junior slot, meaning in the first 30 minutes is for juniors uh, uh, from now on. And uh, I, I gave the words to, to, usually we would like to ask some senior to introduce uh, the juniors. In this case, we can, uh, we, we asked uh, Lukas, who is the supervisor of Premislav. So please, Lukas, introduce Premislav, who will be the first junior speaker in this seminar. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miklos. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so let me introduce Przemysław Szymaszko. Uh, he's um, the PhD student at uh, Warsaw School of Economics. Uh, um, he's writing a, a thesis under my supervision. He's primarily interested in the games of networks and games of conflict. Uh, so he, this is his first paper. Um, uh, this is on the global games on networks. And he has also uh, some other interest related to uh, empirical analysis to the, uh, of games of conflict. So uh, Przemysław, I guess that the, the floor is, or the, or the Zoom is yours right now and you have 20 minutes. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, let me share my screen. Oh, sorry. So, uh, my name is Przemysław Szymaszko. I'm a PhD student at Warsaw School of Economics, and I will tell you a bit about global games on networks of information exchange. Um, <clears throat> so, my research is... Uh, uh, I think the, the importance of this research was highlighted recently by, you know, various protests, revolutions, movements we had, and various reports that say these were fueled by um, social networking websites, by people's ability to coordinate better and to organize themselves around uh, revolutions or protests. And also there is extensive literature, especially recently uh, on riots on global games and moving this to networks. And typical environment with, with, in which we model such, such events, such, uh, yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> is, is the, the environment of a global game. So we have a society consisting of some number of individu individuals, let's say N, and every player facing a choice of taking either a risky action or, or staying safe. And the payoffs of each player are dependent on the number or share, depending on the model, of individuals who decide to uh, participate in the risky action. And you know, sticking to the revolution or protest example, if we decide to stay home and not participate in the movement, obviously our uh, payoff is zero, we don't care. If we go out in the streets, if we want to uh, take part in the protest, and there is a lot of people with us, then we probably will achieve the, the success. And this gives us positive, uh, positive utility. Whereas if we you know, go to the protest by ourselves or in a small group, we don't achieve anything and uh, our utility is negative. The, the issue is the state of the world or you know, how much people we need to engage to uh, achieve our results is unknown to us. Everybody uh, receive only a private signal and then build some view of the world, some posterior based on that. And there are two extreme cases. So if we know the private signals and we know uh, private signals of everyone else in the game, then we have a classic coordination game where we have two equilibria of either doing the risk action or not, which is not that easy to, you know, it's, it's not that useful. Or we have global game if somebody only knows, if a player only knows uh, her private signal. And then uh, it, it, yeah, it, it was already showed in uh, Carlson van Damme, Maurice Shin, how we behave. However, this is not uh, a state of the world when it comes to protests or revolutions because we have something in between. We never sit at home and decide to go to a protest. We always coordinate with our friends. And this is the main contribution of this paper, showing this impact of this net of, of network of connections on such outcomes. And first of all, showing the conditions for uniqueness of an equilibrium in such game. Then I analyze uh, how 
you know, changes in network and changes in uh, model parameters influence that equilibrium. And finally, uh, to visualize it better, I play around with endogenous network. I show how the network will evolve and, and provide some simulations. So starting with a model, we have uh, the state of the world, which is drawn from a distribution that is known to players. And every agent observe a private signal. And I want to highlight this alpha and beta at the end of these first two lines, because alpha is the accuracy of uh, the prior and beta is accuracy of private signal of each player. Uh, playoffs here are based on the share of all players. And everyone has, every, each player has some uh, set of neighbors. Uh, yeah, so having this alpha and beta, each player constructs her posterior, which is a weighted average of all the signals a player receives. Uh, but also here, player has to build uh, expectations about all the other players' posteriors. So um, this is slightly more complicated, but, but what, what this formula says is that if I know, if we have common friend with some other person, I know what signal that common friend sent to that other person, and I enhance it with my own posterior. And this is important because players establish threshold. And a threshold is basically uh, some le level of, uh, of the state of the world. And if I believe the state of the world is lower than this threshold, I will participate in the risky action. And if it's, it's above, uh, I won't, I will stay safe. This threshold is the sum of probabilities uh, of all the others in, uh, of all the other prayers of, uh, of joining the, the risky action. So this can be understood as an optimist towards the risky action. If I believe everybody will join the movement anyway, so even if I, then, even if I think the state of the world, let's say that the government is very strong and I want to revolt against it, I will participate in the protest, protest anyway because I believe everybody joins. And if, uh, if I think from the beginning that nobody will join uh, the movement, even if I think it's very low risk, I will not participate anyway. And this is a threshold and it depends on this uh, expected uh, posterior of others. And this brings us to conditions for uh, equilibrium uniqueness. Uh, this, uh, we have t, uh, t tilde, which is you know, a vector for every player of uh, their mm, thresholds, which are best responses to others' thresholds. And it's enough to show that this is a contraction uh, from uh, Matevet's theorem. We cannot use a Banach theorem because this is not a complete metric space, it's not a Banach space, so we use a generalization. And this condition here shows that if um, our prior is not certain enough for us, if we don't have enough accuracy in our prior about the state of the world, and we don't get enough information from our network, which is this Kj divided by n, um, there will be a unique equilibrium. And what's the intuition behind it? It's, it's very similar to um, the condition for un equilibrium uniqueness in uh, global games in general, but it, it shows us that if we don't have enough knowledge from our network, so if we are not moving too far towards coordination game where we can more or less estimate everything, uh, you know, the, the views of other players, we will have a unique equilibrium. So if we have enough uncertainty, there is unique equilibrium. And some comparative statics, obviously, if we see that our private signal is, is higher, which means we perceive the state of the world as, as less favorable to the risky action, our threshold goes, threshold goes down. So we will be generally less likely to participate. Alpha and beta influence our thresholds uh, depending uh, in a way dependent on uh, the light, our prior and, and private signals. So if we think that our prior was more fa favorable towards uh, taking a risky action, higher alpha will increase our threshold. Uh, what's probably more interesting are conditions for network expansions. And our threshold will increase with our own network expansion if our signal is very low. What does it mean? 
we will only want to extend our network if we believe uh, we will decrease posteriors of others and not to gain new information. And we want others to extend their network of those KJs, which is uh, the size of the network of other people, if their posterior is high. So we want others to get new information if we believe they are not willing to participate in, uh, in the risky action. Now moving to endogenous network model, uh, we want to see how you know having this uh, environment of, of uh, global global game and this protest scenario, how will people or players will exchange their beliefs to uh, to participate in this risky action? And there are two main forces causing people to exchange their beliefs, and these are obviously updating you know learning and convincing others. And we want to check what works here and how it develops network. And there is a very simple network creation model that I propose. So at first, all the signals are drawn by nature. Everyone updates the, their posteriors. And then players decide to establish new edges. And they just uh, count if it's profitable for them, if, they, if they're um, expected utility grows with new edges, and they say, "I want to per I want to create new ed new edge or not." And then, among all of those players that decided to create new edges, random pairs are drawn between them, and edges are established within those pairs. And there are, you know, infinitely many steps as long as there are people willing to establish new edges. And while is while and when there are no two, no more pairs of people who want to establish new edges, uh, we end the game and everybody decides on the action they take. However, when players look for new information from neighbors that they will establish net, net connections with, their expectation is basically the, the posterior because they know that uh, expected value of, of private signal is the state of the world and their belief about the state of the world is their posterior so no player wants to no player believes she will get new knowledge from new connection and therefore uh, willingness to establish a new edge will only come from trying to convince others to to take take take, play, take part in a risky action and yeah uh, and to show it to visualize it slightly better. Uh, I, I run some simulations uh, for different states of the world with no initial network and then with Barabashi Albert to show uh, some, you know, something that's small, more uh, resemblant of real world. And when we have no initial network, and you can think of it as um, taking yeah, some absolutely uh, unlikely scenario, say you know, joining flat earth movement. You probably, no, probably nobody has some any initial network of information exchange on flat earth. You learn about it. And oh, let me quickly explain. The yellow dots are the ones that want to take part in the risk actions and the purple ones are the ones that do not. And the uh, dots or players are closer to each other if they have connections between them. So only players that are willing to take part in risky actions are the ones that want to establish new connections. So in a situation like this, we don't have initial network, we have some uh, risky action. People that don't believe in it from the very beginning will never try to establish a new connection, will never talk about you know, joining a flat earth movement, whereas the flat, earth, flat earthers will try to convince as many other people, but the only ones that will talk with them would be the, the ones that already believe. And we have this very dense clique of people that only enhance their views on this subject. And, um, and this basically represents this uh, comparative statics that if we have already strong signal, we will want to increase our network, build it even, even further. With Barabasi Albert network, we see something which is probably more uh, resembling real life where we have initially uh, more or less spread, spread out beliefs. 
And again, people that were uh, from the very beginning likely to participate in the event are joining a big click with others. However, some of them, like number two here, who is initially connected with multiple people who do not want to participate in the risky actions, can be convinced to do otherwise. But still, we have like a rather big click of people uh, willing to take risky action. And um, here are the some you know changes in, in risk taker sharing population depending on having a network. And let me explain on the. Uh, x-axis we have state of the world so on the left there is zero which means completely risk-free action on the right it's 0.9 so extremely risky let's say on the left we have going to office kitchen and drinking water and on the right starting a revolution trying to destroy the government and the y-axis is what's the difference in per percentage difference in risk taking between people who are in a network or don't have a network. And we see that on the red, it's no initial network case. And we see that uh, initially when the, um, so generally network causes people to take, uh, to, to less often participate in actions that are not risky. So imagine a case of the drinking water in the office kitchen you go there, somebody, you would normally drink it for sure. But if somebody tells you, hey, it's poison, for some reason, perhaps you will may not choose to do it. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you will never start a revolution by yourself and sitting at home, you will never choose to do so on the right. And if you have a network, then perhaps they will convince you to you know, go out in the street and fight the government. And in the red, uh, red graph, or no initial network scenario, you can see that the effects are much weaker on the far edges. And this is caused because there is nobody wanting to talk and nobody wants to establish a network at all in a situation with very high cost on the right or very low cost on the left, because there is no need to even talk about this, this, this cases. And with Barabasi Albert network, uh, the, the effect is monotonic. Uh, okay, here the graph doesn't resemble it because I didn't have many repetitions in my simulation, but generally it's it's monotonic and we see that real life networks always uh, make players choose those actions that would intuitively be uh, less less likely, less probable. So uh, that's it. I just want to leave you with some thoughts that um, there is a whole spectrum of, of choices of global games between the classic global game with no network and with between coordination game. And if there is enough uncertain, uh, uncertainty in the game, uh, the unique equilibrium uh, exists. And uh, in games of this sort, uh, players will only want to build their network to convince others, uh, you know, to convince others their own views and not to gain more knowledge. And as you've seen, uh, network convinces players to take risky actions and discourages from taking the ones that are risk-free. I'd be happy to answer all your questions if you if you have any. Uh, may I ask a question? Yeah, of course. Um, so uh, first point. Uh, I think when you say a unique equilibrium is in a threshold strategies, no? If you allow yes. for general strategies, you cannot hope having a unique equilibrium. Is it correct? Yeah, so uh, exactly. Uh, so as a, as a unique equilibrium, I mean unique threshold or vector of thresholds for all the players. Uh, okay. And second point, can you come back to the timeline where, where the players they form edges? Mm -hmm. Point one to four. Uh, suppose you, you modify a bit the model and um, when you receive your posterior, you, you can choose whether or not to enter a room. And everyone who enters this room, uh, they share together, all together, not two by two, but all together their information. Okay, you have some information room or some website that you can connect and, and you share your information with everybody on, on the website. Would it change something or what? Do, what um, do so I think this is a, actually a great idea because it's more resemblant of you know Facebook and joining some groups. Uh, so this is interesting. It probably wouldn't because uh, anyway, we would have this click of people. Um, so probably there would be more connections 
because usually in the model, what I saw in the simulations is that after forming a couple of connections, people realize, uh, players realize they only connect with others that have very uh, high, uh, you know, likelihood of participating anyway. But I, I think the general results would be the same because you would have a click of people who are initially already wanting to, to part take, take part in the risky action anyway. Thank you. Excuse me, can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, do you have any results if you extend your PO function to a more general, not just a, like a stretch code, which means that your payoff may depend on the your action and the state and also the actions of, of all the others on the network. Do you have, have such kind of results? Uh, so, um, you know, your payoff generally depends on, of, on the action of everyone in the network because it depends on the share of, of players that take the risky action. But in my paper, I have uh, all the generalization and I, you know, instead of having this, you know, just a share of everyone that takes a risky action, we can put a, just a function. And if it's differentiable, I can, yeah, I, I show it in my paper that it doesn't change the, the, the general results. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Then Shami Slab. So in your model, of course, uh, it is general that it is homogeneous Samsung. So every player has a very same ability to to encourage others to participate in an, uh, in an action. But I guess if, if, you, if you relax this assumption that, uh, that you can get, uh, um, you get a different results somehow. So have you been thinking about already that, that what if you change a bit the, this homogeneity, relax this homogeneity and what kind of networks you will find in equilibrium in that case? So, so instead of taking uh, uh, taking as an input the network, I mean I have in mind the Albert Bar Barabash networks. Yeah. Okay, so so this is a primitive in your model is a primitive, but uh, perhaps you can also explain this kind why these kind of uh, networks show up in in in, in applications or in real life. Have you been thinking about thinking about uh, this kind of issues? Uh, so you say that here everybody has the same influence over others, and if yeah. it wasn't the case, if we had different strengths of, of communication, for example, we would have different networks. So I think, you know, um, everybody has the same communication mechanism, but the lower X, for example, you know, if you send stronger signal to others, you change their posterior in a different way. And this is... Uh, you know, if you translate it differently, so we have all the same signals, but different strengths of communication would have exactly the same effect. So here, if you have a very strong signal and you communicate with others, it would be the same thing as if we, yeah, like I said, if we had the same, the stronger communication. And in simulations, this is exactly what happens. So we see this barabasi albert networks with people that have very strong signal trying to reach out to as many people as they can to convince others. So this is something that occurs naturally. Uh, if we try to combine this two, then it becomes quite uh, computational. It, it becomes more difficult and the, the results are not that you know, uh, good looking, but generally this is, it, it works in, in a similar way. Thank you. Okay, then I think if there is no further questions, that, that's it. Thank you uh, again for your talk, Shamislav. So Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And then uh, according to the schedule, we have a short break, right? And we continue at, uh, at 30, 3.30 in Central European time.